Hi everyone, Diane here. Um, today we're going to do a little bit of wet in wet work and I think you're going to enjoy this. I've decided to use this set of paints for this exercise or for this experience. This is a collaboration I did with Victoria Hil Hilbrecht, who um, is a German lady who is creating handmade paints in Germany here in Europe. These have no synthetic contents at all. She um, uses honey and um, natural pigments and everything's made by hand and it's hand poured into these little pots here. Each one of these separates and comes out if you can get hold of it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, half pans they are and she fills them up to overflowing. You can see that that's, you know, she says she fills them six times. They take ages to make and um, they're not a bargain basement kind of paint, but they are rather lovely. And so I thought I would use those because I haven't used them very much yet. And they are nice, much better than they even look when they're in their little pots here because they, are, they look kind of dark. All watercolours do really, don't they? Except the um, Kiritaki ones, which are quite vibrant. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to... Um, this is one of my craft mo brushes. This is a 14 round. If you've got this set, then go ahead and use whatever that's of ones of those you would like to use um, or any other brush. Here's a draw well. I've got uh, lots of different sizes of these. The details for these brushes are always underneath the video in the description. And you can buy them from Japan direct, straight from the manufacturer. Very good prices. He charges 30 um, euros, no, $30 for the shipping, but you can get as many brushes as you like for that. So if you get together with somebody else, um, it's a good deal. I don't have any affiliation with him other than I'm just a loyal customer who's been pleased with his brushes over the years. Or else there's still the set available at Craftmo if you want to um, uh, buy one of our nice sets with the free print in it and everything and um, treat yourself to that. Um, you could, for this, you could use the uh, cat's tongue, for example, to do the circles that we're going to do, or you could use a, even around uh, a flat brush. You know, you can just experiment, do whatever you feel like. So what I thought I would do, a little kind of swatching kind of wet in wet. Um, I was watching somebody else the other day on here um, saying that she was going to teach all the special, all the tricks of the trade of um, watercolor techniques, um, starting with a wash, a graduated wash, and a variegated, well, not variegated, kind of um, two-tone wash. And um, thought to myself, yeah, but before you start worrying about that, and I mean, when do you ever use a flat wash in a painting? What you actually do a lot of, isn't it, is um, we do a lot of wet in wet. So I think we should try that. So I've painted a circle on here and I'm going to drop in some green paint just because green is the color of my true love's eyes. No, um, yeah. So I'm going to drop in some green and then without rinsing, I'm going to pick up some blue and put some blue in the middle and just watch that blooming. Maybe we'll put it in two or three places. And the thing is to be patient and not to um, try to make anything specific happen. It's definitely true that our world is full of the need to control, although we do it very badly. And we would be probably a lot better off if we let things take their own course, if we let nature alone, if we let health alone. And I don't know. But anyway, so I'm just literally dotting in paint and going to let it do its thing. If you do something like this, you will feel 
the need to touch. But I think if you see it like that, couldn't resist that. Don't. Maybe you could add a little bit more. Perhaps we'll give it an outside edge that's got a little bit of fun going on. I don't like that actually. So I'm going to give it another go round. And I'm disobeying my own rule by adding, but no, Diane, there are no buts. You are breaking your own rule. But there we are. I'm going to leave that now. I shall wipe off my brush, rinse it in the dirty water, pick up some clean water, and do another circle here. We don't have to do them all as slow as this. Um, we could go for red. Where did I put it? Where's it gone? I'm using Meaden uh, watercolour paper. £140, 100% cotton. Let's put some red. I'm hoping that these will look doodle worthy when they're done. Um, let's go for this colour. I don't even know what colour it is. That looks like Caput Mortum. I don't think it is the Indian red or something. Um, let's try this one. I don't know what that is. I think this one needs a bit of it. the texture on that one. don't know what colour this is either. Oh, that's lovely green. This is a, a lovely way to explore your paint box. Especially when you've just got a new set. When you wet your circle, if you use water that's not quite clean, just has a tiny bit of colour in it, then you will um, be able to see where you've put your water. What shall I put in the centre of that one? How about this? I don't know what this colour is either. That was a cat. <coughs> Leah as uh, Zen, please. <coughs> I hope nobody's out there fighting. Um, let's start with this colour. This is grey. Oh, 
by the time we've done this, we will have approached most of the colors in this set, so we'll have an idea. what it can do. And once, once I've done this, I'm going to try and link them together. I'm not sure how. Perhaps I'll put a background in. As you go along, you will find yourself being more adventurous, and doing different things. It's the natural thing to do. We haven't used this one yet. I'm just going to put this, whoa, straight on the paper. Let's see what that looks like with gray. Uh -huh. We have green. I'm going to smush this one in. And we've got, because I messed around with this, we've got a very dark, sharp edge on the outside edge there, you see? And these other ones, they haven't got that. And I think we're better off without it. I'm going to put a nice blue here with some purple and some gray. And this is one of the reasons why it's a good idea to do a warm up because after you've done some of this, you'll find yourself able to think or not think, maybe not thinking is the thing. And you start then, you start to paint intuitively. You can't say, I'm going to paint intuitively today. You have to start with something and then Um, then carry on. Not sure if that makes any sense to you. I know what I mean. I mean, it wouldn't be intuition, would it, if you could control it completely? How could it be? How could it be intuitive if you know what you're going to do next? Isn't that kind of like, I don't know, that's, isn't that kind of wrong? Doesn't make sense to me. If it's intuitive, you don't know what you're going to do next. You're just following your impulses and your intuition. You cannot deliberately paint lo loosely or with intuit intu intuition. Quite like this grey. This set of paints was put together for me to my uh, choice. I said to Victoria that these were the colours that I wanted and she created the selection for me. And if you go to the website, to Victoria's website, you'll find them listed there. You can buy the set or you can buy her other sets as well. And she's got hundreds. Hundreds of, not, not different sets, but hundreds of colours. And she has quite a good range of uh, iridescence. 
metallics and things like that. Now I'm, I'm kind of building this up. I have absolutely no idea what this is going to look like when it's dry. No idea. But we are filling the background. And we can see how we're getting all these different nuances of colour where one colour goes over another, where the water comes into play and does its job. Just fill these whites in, make them fill up with paint. There we are. So let us come back in now with some of this grey. Got some interesting lines coming here where the paint is moving and the pigment is pushing into sort of cauliflower shapes. And I think what I need to do now is to dry this and then we're going to do some doodly woodlies on top. You could also if you felt like you needed to, you could lift out some areas where it had got a bit dark and a bit muddy, let's say. I don't know if that's worth doing. The other thing I sometimes do is take a piece of tissue paper, not kitchen roll because that's got too much te texture. The kitchen tissue has probably about the right amount texture and where I don't like the colors just let them let them leave gracefully lighten it up a bit in some places I think one of the things about intuitive painting, people are a bit afraid of what they might produce and think to themselves, oh, you know, I'll reveal my personality because, you know, like Freud and Jung and everyone, or oh, everything that you do, art and all of that shows what kind of person you are. And I don't like what person I am, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to reveal myself. But, you know, the thing is, you actually don't have to show your work to anybody. I do. <laughs> but um, you don't. You don't have to go on Facebook and show everything off. You can just do whatever. I'm getting quite carried away with this dabbing thing. Now what I want to do is, is do some spattering. I'm going to bring in that grey again. You need plenty of water 
get your paintbrush to drip like this. And that's the way I do it, I just tap the top of the paintbrush and let it do that. So it looks to me like we might have quite an interesting background there. Um, so I'm going to dry that. I have given myself a couple of minutes of thinking time and uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do next really, but I, I want to, um, I was trying to keep away from florals a bit because I think florals have been somewhat sort of overdone rather a lot, but then if you come away from florals, what can you do? And uh, it's, it's tricky. So I'm just going to start with a few nice dark leaves and these are wet and I'm going to pull them into the stem and then maybe um, maybe I'll doodle on top of them, do some mark making. We, we just need a vehicle really. And it really actually doesn't that matter, not much matter what it is, does it? And this grey is quite nice. And I'm going to make the stem a little bit more irregular. Just drop a little bit more paint in there. And then, oh, I don't know, what other colours have we got here? Or should we stick with grey as the background colour? We have done the, this kind of thing before, but it doesn't matter, does it? didn't come out very well. Never mind, we can improve him when, when we do the next step, when we do the embroidery. And I think sometimes what makes all the difference is, is coming back in with a bit more paint Go into your wetness. It just gives it so much more dimension. Here, for example. In a minute, I'm going to scratch in there too. Like I said, this this is true, truly, I think, in, intuitive in what I, because I did psychology at university, you know, like I'm sure plenty of you did, and intuition was one of the things that they poo-pooed, you know, there's no such thing in the rest of it. But of course there is, and but it's not something um, uh, you can't, you don't really control it, do you? No, you don't. So I'm gonna do a few more spots down here. Normally I do the spots at the end, but I just got the feeling I wanted to do a few more spots. I'll do a few more spots in these specific places. And um, yeah, so now let's find a scrapey thing. This is a good scrapey thing. When you scrape into the damp paper, if the paint is at a certain stage, you'll get a dark line like this. 
And if it's a bit drier, like that there, you get a lighter line. Don't damage the paper. You know, if you don't press too hard, in other words. Okay, now I think I need to dry that and then I can come in with some pen work. Okay, so we have this now and um, I think what we needed to, to do is to put some white on it. And this is the bit that you can take as long or as a short a time over as you want. So we'll follow our vein lines here and I'm just going to elaborate this a little bit. I think it's possible that I might also want, and you never know until you start, might want, might, might not, to put some black around, around and about as possible. Of course, it's also possible that my pen might not work. If that's the case, I have a choice. I either get up and go and look for another one. I give up or I persist. You can you can do each one slightly differently. Each leaf, I mean, but with a sort of coherence, a sort of pattern. You won't see what you're doing until you get to the end, that's the thing. When you finally finish and you look at it and you say, oh yeah, that I can see now where I was going. Need a bit of white on this one. Usually when I get to this point, I wonder what the heck I'm doing and why I'm doing it. <laughs> and, you know, but you just keep going. Don't give up at this point. You've invested time and effort in this so far, so you don't want to give up at this point. We might not be great artists, but we have art in our souls. So we have to keep going. And I know tonight's video is going to be late because it's getting late. So never mind, it'll get there eventually. Uh, right, now this one. Um, Outside round first. I think I'm going to leave that one quite like that as it is. If 
black inside here. Um, what are you doing? Stop it, Lottie. Emphasize the stem a little bit like this. And this one as well. Let's put the stem in first. Sorry about the background noise, I'm finding it rather distracting. It's my dog, don't know what's got into her. Normally oh, very good. Lottie, what's the matter with you? Come and lie down. Okay, and then we need to obviously need to add some I don't know why the pens keep drying up. The white ones are, are terrible. I know a lot of other people have had the same sort of problem too. And I, I, you just feel after a while that you'd sooner work with the limitations of a brush because there are certain limitations, aren't there, with the brush. Uh, you can't be perhaps quite so precise. It's harder to write. You can't really write, but it's almost as if the pens have decided they don't want to take part in the watercolour game. They want to be restricted to um, writing on coloured paper or something, I don't know. Because when I started a year or two ago with the white pens, they seemed to work okay. But now they don't, they don't seem to be working very well at all. Not the same pens, I've bought replacements, but they still don't work. Okay, so I'm putting in white lines on here. And I think this one probably needs it too, but definitely not with a pen. Okay. You can get a bit heavy handed sometimes, like I did there. I pressed far too hard. Now, just as a last final thingy, I'm going to mix up some of my gold paint, which uh, is a powder, which you mix with a little bit of water. You don't need any other kind of medium for it. Just water. This is Schmincke. Um, they call it aqua bronze, although it's actually gold. 
and it's, it's quite nice. You have to give it a little bit of a mix, but then you do that anyway with the stuff that you get in pans, don't you? Because you have to kind of wake it up. And uh, so let's see what we can do with this because I'm not entirely sure that I like what I did here, so I'm going to cover it over. And this gold paint is pretty good at covering stuff up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these leaves partially gold. Here, I'm going to put some dots on here on top. Yeah, I just just didn't like what I did. I don't know why. I think it was probably the contrast of the black. <coughs> it's often the case, if you do start something on an intuitive level, it is quite likely to go off in a direction that you're not happy with really. So you just have to, you know, see that and try to correct as you go along. That's the whole point really, and learn something from it. I think I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to try to lift some of that up, get a kind of vintage, worn, battered, let me effect. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Started off like that, didn't we? So we should finish like that. This is silver. But what shall I do? Shall I sc I'll scratch something there. There's always one bet noir. And where's my brush? There it is. This one. Just a bit in the middle. Like that. And then I think these ones need a similar sort of treatment. So we just pick up a bit more. We just kind of gild the lily a little bit. Okay, and then we need a bit more because I'm going to do a few spatters. I don't know if this brush is going to spatter. I think it might if I use enough water. Okay, that'll do. Maybe a little bit on the stem. And I think we are nearly done. This one is definitely my bet noir. I 
that's going to have to do. I think it'll be all right once it's dry. So there we are. We'll leave it like that. I must hastily put the lid back on that powder. And what do we have here? We have some textured, vintage looking, gilded, splashy, sploshy, interesting, enjoyable, good way to spend half the afternoon. Hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again soon. And don't forget, take a look on Victoria's website if I can find her set. There it is. Victoria Hilbrecht. Uh, here's her card, my card, our card. Dine Anton and Victoria Hilbrecht Aquarelle, VH Aquarelle. DE. Handmade watercolours made in Germany. So I'll let you go and I shall see you tomorrow. Bye now. Bye everybody. Bye now. See you soon. Take care.